all right guys welcome back to the channel thanks for tuning in thanks for watching and of course thanks for subscribing and sticking with us we truly appreciate the support we're back at it with another video fsd beta 12.3 and we're going to put it through a little bit of a stress test for traffic circles or roundabouts uh, this is where fsd has been pretty poor uh, at handling them large ones small ones medium-sized ones um, and this is going to be able to see how many advancements there have been made with handling traffic circles for fsd beta for version 12. so we're going to test out now we're going to start with a small traffic circle then we're going to go to a little bigger traffic circle and then we're going to go to a probably a larger traffic circle that's unmarked where fsd really struggled uh, in previous builds so we're going to test that out right now and see how it does overall fsd uh, version 12 fsd beta version 12 has been phenomenal uh, mind-blowing in certain 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 scenarios as well but i'm very interested to see how it handles these traffic circles um, again well marked ones are pretty easy we're going to do those but it's the unmarked ones the larger ones the more complex ones that give it some some cause to pause and some issues uh, with how it handles it well before the limit line creeping up there's a stop sign to the left so it can actually just go but it's creeping up for visibility either way which is the safer thing to do a little bit of hesitation i'm okay with that just because it's a blind sort of corner to the left kind of close to the line so one of the things i did notice as a, as, a, as we approach this first traffic circle is that um the only major issue I, I see with version 12 right now the small things but the major thing i notice is that it doesn't seem to be aware of the size of the vehicle um this particular model s is a little is significantly wider than the model 3 or model uh, y and it doesn't seem as though um, fsd beta has a sense of that as you start to watch how it crosses lines on turns uh, i even heard of someone even uh, running over a curb in a model s um, I, I think that's due to the fact that i don't think that the the, the system is aware of the car that it's in or the dimensions of the car that it's in so it has to behave a little bit differently take turns a little bit wider and be conscious of the width of the rear specifically and we've had a lot of close calls here's a little bit of a odd situation stop sign on the ground still adheres to it which is great takes a minute and then goes and then here's our first small traffic circle Let's see how it handles it needs to ye needs to yield goes around nicely again very close to the curb wow very look at that that's not good um flag it there we go that's not good <laughs> but it did a good job getting around a traffic circle so good job passing the first one this is the small traffic circle very easy very simple no big deal there let's go to the next traffic circle all right guys we're making our way to our second roundabout this should be clearly marked lanes but a bigger slightly more complex roundabout traffic circle that we're going to approach and again just re retelling the the issue i said before with the first one is that i feel like the version 12 was built primarily in a model 3 or model y form factor and it it just goes and operates as if it's still in that form factor because i've had many 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 close calls um, of the car getting too close, uh, too close to the lines. You have probably seen the video of the winding road where it almost went into the ditch and maybe did kind of go into the ditch a little bit just because it went over and it kind of miscalculates the its width. And this was a problem with version 10 and version 11, but version 11 kind of corrected it. It did start to make adjustments where it started, it, started, it remembered what type of car it was in, the dimensions of it and took turns accordingly. So if I have one major gripe about version 12, that's going to be it. It feels like it doesn't know what car it's in or what its form factor is as it's driving around. It, it drives as though it's a Model 3, but it has the dimensions of a Model S and goes over lines, gets extremely close to curbs uh, very often. Uh, but otherwise, it's been, it's been phenomenal. It's been uh, game-changing groundbreaking whatever word adjective you want to use to describe it but it's uh 
it's very enjoyable to use now minus the the nag obviously if it didn't have a nag it would just be flawless um, in terms of the experience but it does have the nag so it does require a little bit more attention it does have the eye tracking so it requires more attention you can't really mess around the screen too much changing navigation etc that all is still there but in terms of keeping it compliant and letting it do its thing it does a great job okay so up here under these lights under the overpass we have the larger traffic circle multiple lanes in the traffic circle um, to be able to navigate we're going to see how it goes through we're going to see if it stays smooth if it starts twitching the wheel the yoke uh, and if it uh, knows directionally where to go and can not disturb anyone else who's trying to navigate around it a little bit of rain hopefully it's not uh, too much but we're going to see so we are in the leftmost lane and I think we can make the maneuver that we need to make from this lane. We can. Signage on the ground, it doesn't visualize it, but it has to yield. Yield it, now it has to go around. Ooh, good job, stay in this lane, but you see it's going over the line there, but it made it. Excellent job, excellent job. So it can handle well-marked, medium or large size traffic circles. It can handle small traffic circles. But again, proximity to the lane lines, proximity to the curbs is still an issue. Now let's go for the real test and let's test it out on the large or medium unmarked traffic circle to see how it does. All right, coming up towards the big test, the large uh, unmarked and unmarked meaning there are markings on it, but they're so faint, you can't even see them anymore. They're so worn out. So here we go. So in order to make the maneuver we need to do, we need to go straight. We need to be in this lane and stay in this lane to take the outside of the traffic circle and go straight. Um, version 11, because the lines get fainter as you get up to it and you can't really see the lane lines, kind of got confused, didn't know what to do, didn't know where to go, and was a lot of... Uh, twitching of the of the steering wheel and the yoke so this we're going to see what happens how it fares but you ha it has to stay in this lane right so right here the lane markings kind of disappear or they're not there and it looks like they actually remarked <laughs> this traffic circle so the markings are there so we just need to go through it all right so that's a better sign good job Rolls through it, stays the course, and exits it going this way. Okay, well, <laughs> it can do it. <laughs> Version 12 for the win. But uh, I think the, the issue here is that the, the traffic circle was no longer faintly marked. It was well, well marked this time, so I think we already proved that it can do that. So traffic circles seem to be no problem for FSD Beta version 12, which is great. So now it can continue to go through. Uh, I can try to go back the reverse way just to see. And I'll start in here. Here we go. Let's see what happens. See if it can go all the way around. Again, well marked now. The markings were barely visible by the human eye uh, the last go round. So that, that bodes well for its ability to do it. But let's see what happens. Let's also check the proximity. There we go. It needs to yield. It yielded nicely for the car that was coming. Gets around nice and strong. Oh, it's so close. It's so close. It's scarily close. But good job holding the line. Nice. Then it goes over these lines. See that? Going over these lines without signaling. So that wasn't the greatest, but that was pretty, that was pretty good. That's pretty good holding that line. Again, the issue here is just the, the size of the car. Does it know what car it's in? Uh, does it know the dimensions of its form factor? But otherwise, yeah, this is pretty good. All right, so let me know your thoughts in the comments. What do you think about traffic circles? What are your experiences with traffic circles and FSD beta? Has it gotten better? Has it gotten worse? From our experience, as you see, uh, it's gotten significantly better than before. Lots of confidence going around traffic circles. Again, just the issue being the uh, proximity to the curb and the lines, et cetera. Um, let me know your thoughts in the comments. And until the next time, enjoy your day. Enjoy your Tesla.